The Remington 870 is by far the most popular repeating shotgun ever made. There's something like 10 million of them out there. They've been used for hunting, for a competition by police and military, and today I want to talk about setting up a 12 gauge 870 for use as a home defense gun. There have been hundreds of different versions of the 870 released over the years, and it can be kind of confusing to figure out which one to use as a starting point. So if you've got like an old 870 that your granddad had sitting in the closet for years, can you turn that into a home defense gun? Or do you need to go to the store and get a brand new 870 tactical with all the cool black plastic stuff on it? There's a lot of different directions you can go with it. But in the end, you probably want a shotgun that has some of the six key features that I talked about last week for any good home defense shotgun. Those are a short barrel, a short stock, an extended magazine tube, a shell carrier, sights, and a white light. Now you don't necessarily have to have all six of those things, uh, but it's a good starting point, especially those first three. So you can get any of those things on a brand new 870 or you can modify one, but before you start shopping, there's a few things about the Remington 870 you might wanna know. Most Remington 870s are based on one of three basic models, the 870 Express, the 870 Wingmaster, and the 870 Police. The Express is Remington's budget model. Now that has meant different things over the years, but in general, the Express models are not quite as robust or refined and not subject to the same degree of quality control as the other models. Most of the new tactical models that Remington makes today actually say Express Tactical if you look at the receiver. So even though there might be $500 worth of crap bolted onto them, the base gun is actually the budget version of the 870. So that's something you might wanna keep in mind. The Wingmasters are the premium hunting shotguns. They usually have a nicer finish and nicer stock than the Express models, especially the older ones. They were really nice looking shotguns and there was no mistaking a Wingmaster. And some of the internal components are a little better as well. The 870 Police is built to higher overall standards with some small changes to the internal parts and some stronger springs to make sure that it'll function reliably and can take a lot of abuse. In addition to those three models, there are also 870s marked as Magnum, so like Express Magnum or Wingmaster Magnum. That just means that those shotguns are chambered to use the three inch shells in addition to the more standard two and three quarter inch shells. Newer 870s are all chambered for Magnum shells and eventually Remington stopped putting the Magnum designation on the receiver. If you have any doubt as to whether an 870 can take Magnum shells, just look at the barrel and assuming it's the barrel that came with the shotgun, it'll tell you what size shells it can take. But really none of that matters all that much for a home defense shotgun because any of the good defensive buckshot loads that are out there are just two and three quarter inch shells. Now Magnum or not, ideally your home defense shotgun would be as rugged and dependable as an 870 police model, but you don't necessarily have to use one of the police guns. If you've got an old Wingmaster or you can find a used one for cheap, those are an excellent starting point for a home defense shotgun. I would even say that the Express models are pretty good if you don't intend to shoot it a whole lot, but you also have to take into account the fact that the quality of the 870s has changed over time. Any of the older 870s, no matter which model you're talking about, they're probably gonna be better quality than any of the ones made in the last decade or so. This is especially true for the Express models. The ones made in the last few years are notorious for rusting really easily. They just have a really weak finish and the chambers can also be really rough, which can actually cause shells to get stuck. Now, any of these problems can be fixed, but it's probably a better use of your money to just start with an older 870 that doesn't have these problems. You can find used Express models and Wingmasters at pretty much any pawn shop in the country. And if you do some searching, there are also a ton of surplus 870 police models out there. They're not always really easy to find, but if you're patient, every so often a large police department will sell off all their old shotguns and then the used market will just be swimming in really nice $300 870 police models for a while. So if you really want the best bang for your buck, keep an eye out for one of those deals. My 870 started out as an old police model that I picked up for $250 with no barrel. And even after buying a barrel and a front sight and a new fore end, a new stock and a side saddle, I spent over $100 less than I would have on a new Express Tactical with similar features. It's got a really smooth action, it's nice and broken in, and because it's a police model, I can have confidence in its long-term durability. 
So with the 870, it really pays to kind of shop around and consider all your options before you just decide to go out and buy a new one. So if you're interested in using an 870 for home defense, at this point, you might be wondering how to actually do these modifications. Are you gonna have to take the gun to a gunsmith or can you do them yourself? Well, the short answer is you can probably knock out most of it yourself, but that is gonna be the topic of part two. I'm gonna be explaining some of the specifics of how to actually fix up your 870, so keep an eye out for that video coming soon.